Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hello and welcome to this service for Easter 6, a service of the Word from the Rectory. We hope you're enjoying uh, the services and that you can hear it a bit better. We heard a few people struggle to hear me, particularly last week. I'll try and speak up. I've boosted the volume a bit too, so maybe I'll blast your ears this week. Anyway, we'll start our, our service with the, the first of our hymns, uh, Immortal Invisible. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We are gathered together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer praise and thanksgiving, to ask forgiveness of our sins, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek God's grace that through Jesus Christ our Lord and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we, we may, may give, give ourselves, ourselves to God's, God's service. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Rejoice then, even in your distress. The Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. He called us from our darkness into the light of his day. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. 
May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring, bring us pardon and peace now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Let us pray silently together. O God, from whom from all, all good, good things, things arise, grant such grace to those who call on you, that by your inspiration we may ponder those things that are right, and by your guidance do them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 17, beginning at verse 22. Paul stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked round and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man, he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Just to 
put the reading that we've just heard in context, Paul is on his missionary journeys around Greece and the Mediterranean when he ends up in Athens waiting for Silas and Timothy to join him. It was a difficult place for Paul to be, Athens. In the words that come before the reading we've heard today, we've been told that Paul has been greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols to many gods. But undaunted, Paul has been teaching about Jesus and the resurrection in the synagogue and in the marketplace. This concerns the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers there, and so they have brought him now to a meeting of the Areopagus, the Council of Athens. We're told that people loved to bring the latest ideas there to discuss and debate. Paul's words to the council are striking in their graciousness. He doesn't dismiss their culture and ideas, he doesn't condemn them, but is generous and respectful. In speaking of God, he starts by referring to their own religious icons, saying that their unknown God is the God he is speaking of to them. He says that the God they think they know does exist. And he is no less than the God who made heaven and earth, the one who has given life to everything and everyone, who has set limits on the earth and holds history in his hands. Paul says that this God he is speaking of created and established everything in order that all would seek after him and find him, because he is not far from anyone. And finally he uses words from the Greeks' own poets to say powerful things about God. In him we live and move and have our being. We are his offspring. And Paul's message must have resonated with at least some of them because we're told that some of them wanted to hear more. They invited him to say more. And this was a place, as I've said, where people gathered to hear the latest ideas a place of many competing truths and beliefs, a place where those who sought after truth gathered and brought their case. So there were the Epicureans and Stoics that I've mentioned, the Epicureans who believed that happiness was the ultimate goal and the Stoics who believed that contentment lay in avoiding joy and pain. So these Greeks that Paul um where it was addressing, sought after truth and believed they had answers, whether it was pursuing happiness or simply being content. They believed they had at least part of the truth, but they sensed there was more. In their discussing and debating, they wanted to know the whole truth. And there was a God who they felt existed but was unknown to them. Paul was able to say to these people, this God, the one of whom I speak, is the one you have been searching for. He alone is the creator of heaven and earth, the originator of all things. Therefore, he alone is able to overcome death. And he proved it by raising Jesus from death. I wonder what we can learn from Paul's example of how to speak of God in contexts where he is unknown. We ourselves live in a world of competing truths, where people seek after the latest thing, whether it's a material possession or some escapist pleasure, philosophy or a rule of life. Indeed, people will spend a lot of time and effort um, and money to get fulfilment and meaning in their lives. In this time of crisis we're in, however, many of those things may not be available to people or may not hold the same attraction. This is a time of uncertainty as we know about the future. Opportunities are limited. Plans have been scuppered. It's a time when many may be asking themselves, how do I find fulfilment and meaning and truth again in this very different world? And as Christians, I believe we have something to offer them. And we may find ourselves at this time being asked more often why our faith matters. Particularly in this time of crisis, we may find opportunities to speak of our faith to those seeking after fulfilment, meaning, truth, answers. 
our family members, our friends, our colleagues. As the Apostle Paul, uh, sorry, Peter wrote, always be prepared to give answers to everyone who asks for the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. As Paul was, we are called to be gracious and generous in how we speak of our faith. But we can speak, as Paul did, of the God who gives life to everyone and cares and cares about everybody and everything that he made. The God who suffers with those who are in pain, sickness or distress. The God for whom each and every one of us is special. Each and every one is a child loved and valued by God. And particularly important in this time when the fear of death may hang over many, we can speak of the God whose son overcame sickness and death and is raised now to eternal life, an eternal life shared by all who believe in him. And we can start by praying, praying for those who we know that they will reach out for God and find him in those words of Paul. Praying for opportunities to speak gently and graciously of our faith to those who need to hear those words, for those who need to hear the words of hope offered in Jesus. My hope and prayer daily is that many will, in those words of Paul, reach out for God and find him as he is not far from any of us. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realise that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ our Lord. Last week we had uh, the first part of John chapter 14, where Jesus begins, Do not let your hearts be troubled. And this is what, what he is trying to do all through John chapter 14, to comfort his disciples. He's speaking to them on at the Last Supper, after washing their feet and sharing the Last Supper. He, share, he shares with them uh, his his hopes and dreams for them with, with great love. The disciples are troubled because Jesus is about to die. He tries to comfort them with many promises, but also with tenderness, with understanding, with patience, with love. And so he begins with what he said in the, our reading last week. Trust and believe in me. Trust and believe in the Father. I am going to prepare a place for you, and I will take you with me. He answers their questions. What, what way is it to get there? We don't know the way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you know me, says Jesus, you will know God the Father. And so we come to today's reading. To know Jesus 
is to love him. And to love is to obey, to keep his commands. But how can we keep his commands? His disciples couldn't after just such a short time. Shortly they will desert Jesus. Shortly Peter will disown him. Jesus knows this and knows us too. And yet calls us to keep his commands, to show our love for him by doing so. And he knows that what he is about to do, what he is about to achieve, will make this possible, which before was impossible. And he will do it through the cross, through love. And we won't then keep his commands on our own. For Jesus draws us into the very presence of all of God. This is an intensely Trinitarian passage. Hear how Jesus promises to send the Spirit to us in this passage. I will ask the Father, and he will send you another advocate. The advocate is the Holy Spirit. Jesus says to us, I will not leave you as orphans. This is a, a, one of the tenderest, most caring things he, he, he says, I think, at all, anywhere. God is not far from any one of us, as uh, we heard in our other reading. Hear how close he is to us in, in snippets from this reading of, from John's Gospel. I am in you. I am in the Father. I will be with you forever. The Holy Spirit will be with you forever. He lives with you, will be in you. I will come to you. Those who are loved by the Father, I will love them too. I will show myself to them. This is God's tender love for us revealed in the Son, through whom we see the Father and who sends us the Spirit. The Spirit here is called the Advocate, and there is an important word before it says that the Spirit is the Advocate. But Jesus says that you will be sent another Advocate, not less than the one that we already had at the time, not less than Jesus, but equal to Jesus. The Holy Spirit, who is nothing less than the life breath of the exalted Jesus, in us. As our breath is in us, so the Spirit is in us. As our breath gives us life, so the Spirit gives us life. Life to the full, as we were hearing just a few weeks ago. The word that's translated as advocate uh, has, has been translated in many different ways in different Bible translations. So the one we have today is from the NIV, the New International Version, and it says advocate. But in other translations, the spirit is called counselor, helper, teacher. I think it is good that the spirit is called all these things, for that all these things are who he is. He is all of counsellor. He tells us, uh, he guides us in the way that we should go. He is our helper, guide, telling us uh, where we go wrong and giving us strength to, to go the right way. Our advocate. The Spirit speaks up for us before God, tells us the truth of what God really thinks of us. The Spirit teaches us, leads us into all truth. The Spirit exhorts us to live the way we, we can, to follow God's commands. He comforts us when we fail. He entreats us. He encourages us. He urges us forward. The Spirit is truly another advocate. That is, one just like Jesus but with us all the time. The Spirit is God fully with us, 
we're not fogged off with something second best. Sometimes I think people would wish for Jesus to be with us. Well, he is. He's with us by his Spirit. So whatever is happening, hear Jesus' words to us today. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus has not left us alone as orphans, but has drawn us into life and is with us and in us, and we are in him. He is advocating for us by the Spirit. Amen. Please join our affirmation of faith. Let this mind be, be in you, you which, which was in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. The, the divine, divine nature was his from the first. Yet he did not grasp at equality with God. He emptied himself and became like a slave. Taking the nature of man, he was revealed in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient even to death, death, death on a cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and has given him a name above every other name, so that in the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and in the depths, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you that you have not left us alone. Thank you that you are always with us by your Spirit. That you are so fully and completely with us. So we would pray for those who feel alone. That you would make yourself known to them. In whatever way you wish to. Through neighbours, through friends. Father, do not let anyone be, be alone at this time. May they receive all that they need in terms of friendship and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your world. We pray that your love and life would shine out into every corner, that you would give wisdom to those who are leading the nations to know when to lock down, how to come out of lockdown, how best to do this, balancing all the needs and worries. We pray for those parts of the world that are beset by many other things as well as the virus. So we would pray for peace in Yemen, peace in Afghanistan, remembering especially those who died in the maternity ward recently. For peace in every corner, that they would know your power to heal our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For your church too, with, with the challenges that we face, may you bring many opportunities to share faith with others. We pray for a blessing on all the services going out on the internet. We pray for the individual contacts that we have, that we would share your good news really well that you'd give us the words to say and help us to notice the opportunities that you give us and to share with, with grace and love your good news, that you are with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. And we would hold before you now those who are sick or ill or worried. We pray that you would bless them with your presence. We name them before you in silence. Lord, 
we also pray for those who have recently died, asking you that they would know rest and peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We meet in Christ's name. Let, Let us, us share, share his, his peace. peace. Peace be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Almighty, Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light upon our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all people, in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our next hymn, which is Jesus lives thy terrors now, can no death no more appall us. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The God, God of, of peace, peace, who brought, brought again from, from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ that, that great shepherd, shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his, his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. We'll leave you now with a piece of music that was recorded by churches across the UK. You may have seen it already. It's the, the UK Blessing. Um, we, it, it's a seven-minute thing, but it's, it's really nice. So I hope you enjoy it. from heaven this isn't second guessing we know that we are protected may the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message grace and favors in your nature in your essence peace, favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children peace, favor be upon you and a thousand
Thank you for joining us. See you soon.